everyone. My name is Rochelle Innocent and I'm the founder and CEO of Project Purpose. Welcome to our channel. Our community is focused on fostering the intellectual and character development in children. We do this through our parent-child workshops that are focused on four themes, autonomy, self-efficacy, compassion, and self-concept in order to cultivate grit, perseverance, and resilience in each child. And we are so thrilled to be offering one of the first of its kind digital, virtual, and continuous learning environments, enabling parents and children to connect from all around the world. At Project Purpose, our overarching mandate is to renew and rebuild family, community, and relationships. Our different social media platforms provide us with an opportunity to have discussions, to create space on all topics that relate to family, community, and relationships with ourselves as well as with others with a primary focus on mental health and education. More precisely, the ways that the institutions of mental health and education play a role and have played a role in our societies at large. These discussions and debates provide us with an opportunity to think critically about what needs to change within these structures for us to live up to our bold slogan, support, protect, and empower each child through youth-focused development, better known as leadership in juvenescence. We recognize that in valuing our children's leadership potential, this also translates as recreating and co-creating environments, both socially and politically, that will enable our children to thrive. For those of you who are particularly keen on the topic, we also write thought pieces every other Sunday. We actually have a thought piece scheduled to drop this upcoming Sunday, so definitely be sure to meander over to the website and check out our online content. Now, if it is the case that you are looking for a listening alternative, well, we're available wherever podcasts are playing, and we provided you with access to a few links down below. Now, as is the convention, the sure to subscribe hit that post notification bell so that you are aware of every time we post and of course if you like these conversations and you want to keep them going like comment and share this segment let's get into it Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another segment here on Project Purpose. For those of you who are new, we cover topics that relate to mental health, mental wellness, and education on a week-by-week -week basis. And today's topic of discussion is education. And on the topic of education this week, we're going to be talking about the education that starts at home and that's the conversation around diversity. Now diversity is different from the first conversation that we've had this week, which was on difference, but difference is the precursor, is the prerequisite that understanding the value of difference before we can start extracting the value in diversity. And maybe not the diversity that you're thinking about because oftentimes when we talk about diversity, we're talking about aesthetic diversity. So what we consider to be the primary dimensions of diversity, which are typically the things that you see that stand out. And that can be someone's biological gender, that can be someone's race, that can be someone's hair color, eye color, just the features that you would pull up as you are describing someone. That is what we consider to be primary dimensions of diversity. And while those are great indicators of potential diversity in the areas that really count in environments that require diversity in order to really be innovative and to be strategic, are the kinds of diversity you don't see. And that's oftentimes the diversity that we can't hold at unless we're having a conversation with someone. So these are typically considered to be the second dimensions of diversity, and this is someone's belief system. This is diversity of thought, diversity of belief, diversity of their personal value systems, diversity of their philosophy, but also diversity of experience, diversity of expertise, diversity of maybe their worldly, they've traveled to different places, but just you want to have those kinds of diversities that are going to change the way that they look at a situation that will ultimately have an impact on their perception. And if you have enough people who have different perceptions that reflect different experiences, different backgrounds, different skill sets, if we're only looking at gender and we're only looking at skin tone, and hair color, then oftentimes you're going to miss the mark because if all of the people 
people that you're looking at were raised in the same environment and if you go by the maxim that people are more a reflection of their generation than they are of the people who raised them, then you're not going to get the diverse thoughts that you're looking for. So it's important that when we think about diversity and when we think about the benefits of diversity, we think about the diversity that we can only tell when we have a conversation, when we dig deeper. And the only <laughs> way that you're going to dig deeper and ask the appropriate questions is if you value difference. And so that's why I like to couple these conversations together because really if we're looking to have the diversity of thinking that will drive innovation, drive strategy, drive having the kind of change and disruption that every industry needs and every industry is looking for to stay competitive in a global climate, then you want to have the kind of diversity that only gets drawn out when you're really focusing on the differences, on the value of the differences in the people in the room. And you want to be mindful of the kinds of differences that count for your given setting and your given context and the kind of diversity that doesn't. And so I think that this is the part of the diversity conversation that often gets lost in translation because we think about diversity in terms of equity and diversity in terms of equity is typically gender-based diversity. But diversity needs to go beyond equity. There's diversity again in culture, in thought, in creed, in nation, in background, and most of the kinds of diversities that if you have all of those people looking at the same issue and putting their input, then the solution is going to be very out of the box. It's going to be a solution that's over and above what people who would have the same background, the same like ways of thinking would generate. And so that's the kind of diversity that I really want to focus on because that's the kind of diversity that we want to attract and we want to bring around us if we're looking to bring something new into fruition. And so one of the things that I really enjoyed about my education when I did my master's degree is that I was coupled with people who came from different countries who had different first languages, but they came from different schools of thought. So their academic background was fairly different than my own. And being able to tackle a problem statement with all of those different lenses is enabled us to come up with a solution that had a lot more ingenuity than if it was just a bunch of people who had the same background by way of academics, by way of what they would bring to that conversation, what they would bring to the problem solving arena. And so when I talk about diversity, the kinds of diversity that where you're going to extract the most amount of value, you're talking about the diversity in critical thinking, right? And so that's the kind of diversity that I feel that often gets lost in translation because we don't know what questions to ask to be able to garnish what kinds of diversity diversity in the ways that people solve problems is going to be beneficial for the given environment that we're looking to invite these individuals in. And that's not going to be the same kind of diversity. There's so many different ways that people can approach a problem and that people have cultivated their own capacity to think critically. And so if you're looking to think critically in an innovative way and be disruptive to the kinds of solutions that come up to place, then you want to really think about, well, what questions can I ask to gauge the difference in the capacity to to solve problems and to what extent is that going to be a value added to my team. That's the kind of diversity that I feel is really what we're seeking to extract in the work environment. But at home, at play, in your personal life, I mean, you call it what you want it, you can frame it the way you want to, but if you're looking to extract value and having those conversations, you really want to think about having those conversations that enable you to get a sense as to, well, how do they think about problems? What do they think about problems? Do they even have the same definition, working definition of what a problem is than what I do. And I think those are the kinds of differences that often we assume are similar. If we recognize the disparity between those building block elements and we start to think and put our heads together and create something innovative, then that's going to be something that's really going to blow your mind away, right? Because they're going to challenge your way of thinking, you're going to challenge their way of thinking, and in challenging and responding to the challenges with the purpose of responding and rising to the occasion, like meeting the challenge for what it's requested of you, forcing yourself to think about the things that you think about without much thought. What I love about diversity and what really is the value of diversity is it forces the meta in the problem solving. So when you're talking to someone who doesn't naturally agree with you or doesn't naturally see your point of view, it forces you to slow down and to think about your own thought process. And in thinking about your own thought processes, you're the one who's auditing and mining the gap based on the questions being posed. And that kind of meta thinking, the double, triple layer of thinking where the questions are forcing you to think about the ways that you think about problems and forcing you to think about the ways that you think about solutions and forcing you to really take a look at your critical thinking lens and your critical thinking toolkit and ask yourself, well, what do I add so I can respond to this gap in the way that we're seeing this issue? Or what do I ask so that I can have her or I can have them bridge the gap between how we're seeing this issue? And having that depth of thought
thought, targeting a given problem is going to be where the most amount of disruption and creativity arises. And so that's the diversity that I think that we really want to hone in on and then that we don't hone in on enough. I think that there are just so many different ways that all of us are different and that all of us bring diversity into the room. The kinds of diversity that we're looking for can be dependent on the kinds of problems that we're looking to solve. And every business is here to solve a problem, right? And so every person's point of view, perspective, intake has the potential to really contribute in a valuable way every single one of us on those secondary as well as primary dimensions of diversity. But here really hoping to emphasize more so the second dimensions of diversity, because again, there's a lot of different people who can come in a lot of different packages raised in the same environment, but raised in the same environment, they went to the same schools, and if they think the same way, you're not getting the diversity that you're looking for, which is really the point of this video. So I hope that I've given you some food for thought, something to think about, even diversity by way of Family, like people who are single, whereas people who have families or people have, you know, who have parents that they're taking care of. I mean, all of these different profiles of, of lifestyles and of living and of dealing with just life in general can really bring a completely different perspective to that conversation. And it's a perspective worth noting and worth hearing as well. So in any case, that was it, but definitely not all. Now before letting it go, I would be remiss if I didn't let you know that we will be going live at least twice a month, every month for the foreseeable future on our Facebook page so definitely be sure to tune in now these events are paid events so if you do see yourself participating in our community on an ongoing basis then I do suggest that you take a look at one of our package plans yes we do offer package plans over and above our live events as well as access to webinars and workshops largely focused on self mastery over and above those events so check it out be part of our game changer community being part of the change that you want to see allowing us to small role to play in your journey. When you're on the road to 1K, so we invite you to follow us across all of your social media platforms and we look forward to chatting with all of you very soon. We'll talk to you later.